O oh Lord, we ask that you would, in fact, order our steps in your word. As we turn to your word now, as we hear your word from scripture, we ask that you would enable us to act upon your word, to not just be hearers of the word, but to do it. In your name we pray. Amen. We are uh, in a sermon series right now that we have been calling Connect. We've been looking at six chapters in the Gospel of Luke, Luke 5 to 10, because that is this section in the Gospel where Jesus begins his ministry. He's calling people to him. He's sending people out. We've observed this pattern that happens as Jesus does that, as he connects with people and people connect with one another, as he helps people grow more intimately and closer to him, and as he sends people out to do ministry, to do these acts of love. It's this journey, but we have been honing in on just one aspect of that journey, on just the connections that Jesus makes in the in that journey and we're doing that because it's something that we want to be better at as a congregation and so let's turn now uh, to luke chapter 8 we're going to start at verse 19 and we're going to look at yet another time that jesus connects with people in a very different way than we've seen before Um, so i want to encourage you to follow along you can look up on the screen you can pull out your device use a pew bible And if you don't have a Bible or you want to have access to a real Bible that you can hold, there are free Bibles at the uh, Welcome Center. If you have interest in that, just swing by and grab yourself a free Bible if you want to do that. But we're looking at uh, Luke chapter 8 now, beginning at verse 19. Hear the word of God. Then his mother and his brothers, this is Jesus, came to him. But they could not reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. But he said to them, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is the church, and by this question I'm talking about the whole church, not just Hamblin Church, but is the church a family or is the church a mission outpost? Is the church just a community of people being nice to each other? Or is the church a place that has a mission, that's being called to be active in a particular way? This is a question uh, we talked about a great deal uh, recently in this church. Uh, We have, uh, many of you know, uh, spent some time thinking about what our mission statement is and and not only what the mission statement is, but how we can live into that mission statement. Uh, So many of you were part of that process, and there was a certain point in that process where I think it's fair to say that it really kind of came down to two big ideas. One idea was th- that, that we are a family as a church. There's a phrase that we've been using at Hamblin for a long time, that we want to be a, a warm, caring, sharing community of faith. It's that kind of family model. And then the other idea was to actually grow active followers of Jesus Christ, to be making disciples. And, and we got to this point where we were discussing, well, which are we? What are we? What are we being called to? It's actually a a similar situation that Jesus finds himself in in our text as his family comes to him. There's this sense in which this community that he is building is a family, but there's also this sense in which this family that he's building is called to mission. And we decided as leaders that we weren't going to choose between one or the other, and Jesus doesn't in this text either, that we were going to do both that we were going to be the family of God and we were going to live into our mission as much as possible. Now, in our text today, this is one of those texts that is, has a very uh, particular and strong call to action that Jesus is approached and asked about what it, uh, or he, he does, he's not asked about this, but he gives this opportunity to teach in this moment where people come to him, and he clearly shows us that, that mission in the church doesn't just happen, that being in the body of Christ, being part of the family of Christ, is not something that just happens. There is actually a call to action here. 
We don't live into mission. We've got our mission that's growing active followers of Jesus Christ, that's building his community. That is so much like the mission that the disciples are called to in Luke. So we've got this mission, and there is this sense in the text that that does not just happen. It doesn't happen just by listening, and it certainly doesn't happen by itself. We don't live into mission just by listening to sermons. We don't live into mission by using particular words. We don't don't accomplish the mission God is calling us to by just defining what that mission is. And we have admittedly spent a great deal of time defining what that mission is, and I'm glad that we did, but that doesn't mean that we're doing it, that we're accomplishing it. Instead, Jesus is saying here that we join in mission with action, that we respond. And a response might look like a lot of different things. It might look like us inviting our neighbors, that we hear the word of God that Jesus brings to us, and we respond to that word by a lot of different actions. Maybe we invite neighbors to some kind of ministry, or maybe we take time to listen to someone who is in a particularly lonely phase of their life. Maybe we invite people or we start some kind of Christian community or we walk alongside someone who needs some encouragement in their life as a disciple uh, of Jesus. There's all kinds of ways that we might hear the word of God and respond just like this moment of teaching that Jesus has in our text. There are a lot of examples of how we might take action toward mission. Let me give you one particular example since it's stewardship season. Now, if you're new around here, you got to know we we don't talk about this very much. Uh, But um, this is a a great example of of response. You might know that in a Presbyterian worship order or actually really in a Reformed worship order, we always put the offering, you know, when we pass the plate, we always put that later in the service. We always make sure that the reading of the word, the reading that I just did, takes place before the the offering and we do that because we don't want to come and like uh, uh, do something to earn hearing the word we want the action of the offering to take place after the word so we we hear the word and then we do it we take action that's just one example In fact, if you looked in the bulletin, don't do it right now, but if you did look in the bulletin, you would see all kinds of ways to respond to the word, that we hear the word of God, we understand what Jesus is calling us to and who he is and what it means to be the family of of God, but then we do something about it. We respond in some way. We have, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, we've got this giving thermometer in the bulletin. That is a call to action. It's a call to response. Now, that little giving goal that we set each week, it's not a financial report, though we have financial reports, and that is something every family would talk about is finances, certainly, um, and we are talking about being the family of God, but that giving thermometer is not a financial report. It's a call to respond. Every week, we just kind of give ourselves, and it's very thoughtful, but we give ourselves a goal. And we say, hey, we want to respond to the word of God with a lot of different ministries and a lot of different ways. And we're going to, we're going to work toward that. And we're going to, we're going to challenge one another a little bit. And so every week we set this goal and say, hey, we think this is what God is calling us to this Sunday because uh, this is what it takes to support the ministries that God is calling us to. And, um, um, it, and, 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 and we feel like that, that God's calling us to that on any particular given, uh, given week. Uh, and so uh, all that is is just this, this goal that we set, that we get to work toward. It's like the fun part of, of ministry, if, if you will, that we call one another to respond, and there's a lot to celebrate there. Now, I am not, this is not a stewardship sermon. I am not even actually asking you to give anything like that at all. I'm just saying that this kind of thing, setting a goal each Sunday and saying, hey, let's, let's encourage one another to give or, or, or responding with the offering the way that we do. I'm just saying that those are responses. And it's not the only response. It's, I'm not asking you to give. I'm just saying that when we do give, it is a response to the word. 
But there are so many other ways that we hear the Word of God and we do it. You might be helping with the students over at Hamblin Elementary, this, this mentoring program we've got going on. You might be having just a barbecue in your neighborhood and suddenly you find yourself in this situation where you are being active and you are able to carry out the mission that, that God calls you to or you have some kind of interaction in, in your workplace and, and you're called to act because of that. We could say this is attention in Scripture, this, this, this hearing and this doing. Or we could say it's a progression that we hear God's word and we respond and there's, there's progress there. But this is very difficult for Protestants. We don't like talking about this kind of thing. We always want to make sure, and rightly so, that the Christian life is not about works, that we're not earning anything, that it's all about the grace of Jesus, that we hear about the grace of Jesus and it's wonderful and it's true. And I think that is the absolute, inter the absolute focus that we should have. I think, I think Protestants in general are, are right about that, but it gets uncomfortable as soon as we start talking about doing something, as soon as we talk about responding or taking action. But the truth is, this is all over the Bible. All over. Got the parable of the sower. Jesus has just shared that in this, uh, this uh, 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 just before our text. He's talked about the parable of the sower. And you, if you know that parable, you'll remember that the seed that falls on the good soil is the seed that, that hears the word of God and bears fruit hears the word of God and does it. And so that's what Jesus is referring to when he says, my mother and my brothers, when he says, my family are those who hear the word of God and do it. James tells us to be doers of the word and not merely hearers. At the end of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise person. Luke, in his version of that account, adds that Jesus says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? And later on in the Gospel of Luke, in just a couple chapters, there's this moment where this woman who is, is just praising God and loves Jesus so much bursts out and she says, Blessed is the womb who bore you. She says that to Jesus. She loves him so much. And Jesus' response is, is, no, blessed are those who hear the word of God and do it. So think about our text today. Jesus is teaching, and as has happened many times before in Luke, he's gathered a crowd. There's kind of this crowd around him keeping uh, uh, people from him, and his family comes Luke says his mother comes and his brothers come and they want to get to Jesus. And then this kind of uh, maybe a telephone game happens because they can't get to Jesus. So there must be a little gossip chain that goes and through the crowd, the word spreads in Jesus' ears and is told that his mother and his brothers are out there wanting to see him. And that's just this moment that Jesus takes to teach this lesson. And he says, my mother and my brother... Those are the people who hear the word of God and do it. We have this, this call to be the family of God, but also to act on it, to be the family of God with mission. And this becomes even more cool when you think about what family meant in the ancient world. Family was such a big deal in the ancient world. I mean, you used to, people used to, um, when they introduced each other, when we do that, we might say, oh, hi, how, how are you? What, do you? what do you do for a living? Or we might share something like that. But in the ancient world, the question would have been, what family are you from? It was absolutely part of your identity, the family unit, the even, and even to a larger extent, a community that was understood as a family was always greater and more important than an, in, than an individual. As a matter of fact, the entire Roman Empire was conceived of as a family with Caesar as the head, as the, as the father of that family. So we are talking about an extremely high view of family. So when Jesus says, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it, it is this incredibly radical statement taking family to a level that we've never even conceived of, that we don't even 
think about in that way. God calls us to this family, and Jesus is, is showing us how to be part of that family. Now, Jesus is not dissing his family. Jesus loves his mothers and his brothers, and we should be loving our family too. It's just that in this moment, Jesus redefines what the family of God means. The family connection that Jesus is creating is, is, it involves mission. It involves doing. And it's a stronger connection than any family we can think of. Recently in uh, Psychology Today, there was a, a yet another new survey that some medical organizations did. They surveyed 20,000 U.S. adults ages 18 and older, and almost half of them reported feeling alone or left out. Generation Z, you know, that's the generation of, of, of people who are born about 1995 or, 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 uh, or younger. They were found to be the loneliest generation. And here is this new result from this study. They actually found that social media use is not a predictor of loneliness. We talk about that a lot, how social media must be affecting our lives. But what they found, that at the end of the day, it really is just about a lack of human connectedness. Look around the room. I mean, if this statistic is, is right, and I think we have some sense that it, it's at least close to right, look around the room and think about that, because then that means that half of the people sitting here in this room are isolated. Half of us experience loneliness or disconnection. Think about our neighborhood around us, the people who just live right here. Half of those people are, are lonely. They are isolated. They are disconnected. And Jesus calls us and says, hey, my family, my mother and my brothers, those are the people who, who hear the word of God and do it. So if we're called to connect, think about the, the excitement. I'm going to even use the word burden, but in a positive burden kind of way, that, that God is calling us to connect with people who are in the midst of this disconnection. And he tells us right here how to do it. My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. If we want to include people in the family of God, if we want to be part of the family of God ourselves, that's what we do. We respond to God's word, and there's so many different ways to respond, but we don't just hear it and leave it at that. We take action. This is hard. It's hard to be, have such a direct challenge in a text. But we don't, want to, we don't want to soften it. Jesus says, hear and do. And so as we think, and maybe you've been part of this sermon series, and maybe you haven't, but as we think about the, 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 um, the, the sermon series over the past few weeks, and then we read this passage where Jesus is defining what family looks like, I think we have to ask ourselves the, the most challenging question possible. And we ask, what have you done? What have I done to connect? Have we heard this series? I know, I know we've heard it. But what are we doing? You read a text like this, whatever it is, and you have to come away, I think, asking that question. What are you, what am I going to do because of that, this text? Because apparently that is the difference between a regular family, and the family of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing together.